right. Um, just a few questions about our band. Mm -hmm. uh, the lyrical content of the record. I'm here with one of my favorite people, Justin Cordoyu, who is our producer. We have a few questions that our London, UK friends want to know, so it's good to see you. Good to see you too. You're Thanks for good. taking some time for me. Thank you. Thank you. I hang out with the right people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, just a few questions about our band. Mm -hmm. uh, the lyrical content of the record is very personal. Yes. How did you go about the vocal approach to the record with me? I think with, especially with you, it's more about comfort and uh, and also getting that message through, making sure that each one of the, the words um, has a meaning and that you express that meaning, which you did anyway, naturally. Well, you're good at pulling it out of me. That's... <laughs> Uh, okay. You do, you do. <laughs> and we're back. You do a good um, job of it. Like, you, you know, it's making you feel comfortable, which being in a studio, having all of the attention on you as the singer is very difficult. It's, it's, it's a very unnatural environment. When you're up on stage, it's, uh, it's, I think, uh, being a limited artist as I as I was uh, it, it, it's easier because you don't have a personal relationship with every single person in the crowd so yeah, you you're bouncing can, off a whole energy yeah yeah and and so you you it's almost more freeing to be on stage but when you're under the microscope and it's just you and a microphone and one or two other guys in the room it's it can be very claustrophobic and very uh, intimidating. So I know they're I, scary. I'm just like, why is this bald man yelling at me? You know, I, I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. But you know, it, it's so it was key to make you feel comfortable and to be able to express um, all all of the uh, intentions behind the, the lyrics. And um, I think you did a great job. I think mm. I think at one point you were dancing. Yes, I do. I, get, I turn the lights off so no one can see me. But yeah. I'm just always, yeah. Yeah, and and that, I all of that stuff, that. and you know, smiling, and the lyrics that you need to spot, smile on, and and you know, concentrating on on the the heavier lyrics. I think that um, all of that goes into um, bringing forth the the lyrical content and uh, having it come through in the song. And I think you did an amazing job. Thank you. You're welcome. You did good too. Oh, thanks. You should do this for a living. Um, <laughs> the musical setup of the band is wonderfully direct. I love that they said it wonderfully is. direct. Yeah. <laughs> did you try totally. and emulate their live performance in the studio or bring new elements to the final tracks? I think we did a little bit of both. Um, I think the energy of you guys playing live is terrific. So you don't want to touch that. You don't want to change it. In And when we recorded the album, we did full takes. And... I'd say 90% of it is one full take of the band the entire time. And that um, that creates kind of a, you know, a fresh uh, approach and a live sound. Uh, hopefully it captures, you know, the, the essence of the band. Um, and there was no, no cutting and pasting or anything like that. So every single chorus is a little bit different. It's human. And... Um, and then you know we did a, a a few little you know ear candy things um here and there but it was just mainly to accentuate what was already there in the power of the band so um so yeah that was kind of the approach that we took through the whole album and yeah. i think it worked great i had fun i did too and i think that's <laughs> the, that's the key too is having a fun experience in the studio because so many times it it, it does get sterile and and you know there's no crowd, there's no energy to build off of. Um, so you have to keep it light. You have to keep it fun. You have, I think if you work it to death, the life goes out of the music. And I, um, and I don't think we did any more than four takes on on any one of the songs. So we work pretty fast. It's yeah. Because we're having a good time. Yeah, and you know the yeah. you know the material, you guys are well rehearsed and you brought that to the studio which makes my job a whole lot easier. So um, so I think all of that went into uh, creating the the energy of the lives 
live sound and didn't, you know, even though it is a studio album, I hope, I think we captured the essence of your live show. I think you, I think we did. I think you did a great job. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so tell me more about the studios you choose to record the album in and why. Well, um, on the first record we tried, we kind of bounced around a few different studios and the one that I know you guys felt more comfortable in and that just fit the band, the sound, the size of the room, the workflow, um, was a studio called Ronnie's Place. It's, um, uh, it's part of the Black River uh, Studios, which is your sound stage, it's right next door, which is actually where I started working. That's where I got my first job was uh was working at soundstage so i felt very at home there um and yeah we just we got a killer sound uh you guys played so well off of each other and and it allowed us it allowed you guys to be all in one room and you know play as a band and not as band it's much elements yeah it's much easier it's yeah more, yeah it's more fun too because yeah. we can just feed off each other like in rehearsal or on stage yeah, yeah it's nice Awesome. Uh, do you have a favorite track on my album? <sighs> you know, I each time we would do a session, I would have a favorite track, and then we'd do another session, and there would be another favorite track, and then we'd do another session, and i go, oh, now this is my favorite. So, you know, right now, I'm in love with Perfect. Oh. And, you know, because the we, we just finished that, <laughs> and then, you know, we're, we're going to finish um, Do What You Want to Do, and I know that's going to be my favorite now. Um, but, you know, I think, I think some of the highlights are, uh, you know, Broken is awesome, and um, uh, Damn, I'm Being Me Again is incredible, and, I mean, it, 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 I think it depends on your mood, too, you know, depending on, on how you're feeling, you know, each song kind of... Uh, uh, kind of comes to life depending on where you are uh during that time that you're listening so what do you think about the current east nashville scene? i feel like it's so that's the scene for you know kind of the anti-music row artists and uh and you know you get a lot of you know indie rock you get a lot of um you know just different uh, uh kind of singer songwriter um uh, music and, and kind of cool punky stuff and i think because your sound is so different it's a it's not it's so fresh no one else is a three-piece with this with an upright bass are you kidding me <laughs> doing like pop punk rock <laughs> stuff so you fit perfectly in east nashville because there's no one else like you there is no other band like brie and east nashville just eats it up just totally accepts uh, new groundbreaking artists. So I think that's that's your niche. You're, you've created your own niche, and that is where you fit in East Nashville, and why Aww. you fit in East Nashville. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you chose to relocate to Nashville from L.A. What was the main factor behind that move? Well, um, actually, you know, I actually started here in Nashville, but I got a job with uh, Mike Shipley, who is just who was um sadly he passed a few years ago um one of the greatest mix engineers and engineers and producers of of all time uh you know anyone from Def Leppard to uh, he he ran tape on Queens the night at the opera he's actually oh one of the people God. stomping and clapping on we will rock you um you know he did uh, he was Mutt Lang's engineer so he did all of those huge records um you know Tom Petty uh the Cars um uh, uh even Nickelback and Shania Twain and you know all of those uh, love him or hate him you know he <laughs> he sold so many records and he was such a great guy so he hired me and he was uh, one of my first mentors and wow that's a great mentor to have it was amazing and I it was like sitting and watching Picasso paint and you just I would pay money now to do that uh, so anyway I lived in that's why I moved to LA uh, it was a job of a lifetime and I learned so much and then the scene in LA is just it it, it it's not like Nashville you know Music City is Music City for a reason because the entire economy is based on music here That's it is true. it's the heartbeat of the city and uh in la it's it's more about music and fame or not music but uh it's all about um 
you know, fame and movies and TV and music is kind of an afterthought now. It's not like it was, you know, in the 80s. I, I was working with Tommy Hendrickson, who now plays uh, guitar for Alice Cooper, but he's a great producer and, um, and guitarist and songwriter. And I convinced him to move to Nashville. It's, I said, let's go to Music City because it is in the name Music City. <laughs> we'll be able to make music... Uh, and be creative again, and and we did, and, and I love it. All right, let's talk about you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> the tables have turned. Yes. What projects are you working on on at the at the moment? At at the moment, <laughs> uh, we are. I am finishing up the last track of the Brie record. Um, that should be done tomorrow. So uh, fingers crossed uh, that, that uh, the timing works out. But. Um, but after that, we're working on uh, Deep Purple. Uh, I'm working with uh, the legendary producer Bob Ezrin. Um, Bob has produced, you know, Pink Floyd, The Wall. He signed Alice Cooper and did all the early Alice Cooper records. Uh, Peter Gabriel. Um, you know, the list goes on. And uh, and so now we're doing. Uh, this is the second album we've done with Deep Purple, and then we're doing a Fish record. This is the second Fish record that we've done. Um, and, uh, and that's going to keep us busy for quite some time. And we had, we've just finished the, uh, Hollywood Vampires record, which oh, yeah. was like a dream come true. <laughs> it been. was, uh, I mean, I got to work with Paul McCartney, with, uh, Johnny Depp and Joe Perry, Joe Walsh, uh, Dave Grohl played on it, Brian Johnson from ACDC, um, Robbie so Krieger, crazy. uh, and and Marilyn Manson was on a track. I'm not sure if it, it was on the record or a bonus track or, or what, but, uh, you know, just got to work with some of the most amazing uh, people, and so much of it was done at Johnny Depp's house, and That's it was so just... Cool. <laughs> it, it was a, a moment of time that I will never forget and will always be thankful. Well, you deserve it. Well, thank you. You definitely <laughs> that, do. It was awesome. All right, you've worked on a multitude of artists, uh, what are the prerequisites for working with different artists? Why did you choose to work on this project with me? Well, as you remember, um, we went, uh, Bob Ezrin and I went to a, uh, a rehearsal space and saw you guys perform, and I <laughs> I instantly got it, and I loved it. I could it. tell. You were, like, I was, getting all in. I was it. zoned in, and... Uh, and so yeah, I went, man, I want to work with this band. And Bob was too busy, you know, he has he has his hands in so many different things. <laughs> and and so he asked me if, if I would be interested and and I think Panda the, <laughs> this was the prerequisite for producing a Brie record. The question was, what's your favorite dinosaur? And apparently I answered correctly. I think yes. I said Stegosaurus. Yes. And had I said T Rex Mm -hmm. I would not took be no here creativity today. to come up with T Rex. Yeah. Everyone knows about. Yeah, it. but I, I do have an affinity for Stegosaurus. Says Stegosauri. <laughs> um, so yes, so that was your prerequisite. Um, you know, for me, uh, it, you know, if if an artist is passionate, that's always you know. If you're just doing it for fame and you don't have any talent and, you know, uh, it's not worth the money It's because there's so much time that you put into it. Um, you want to love it, too. Yeah, you. it's something that I have to be passionate about, but also the artists as well, you know, and, and not about the fame and the, uh, and the money and the success and everything like that, but about the music itself. And, and obviously, I mean, this is... It's like you're taking your heart and putting it to music. And that is what, what attracted me to, to you guys oh. so much. Well, thank you so much for hanging out and answering my questions. Well, thank you for having me. And congratulations on the new record. And I wish you all the success thank in the world. Thank you. I'm taking you with me. Awesome.